In this video we're going to look at controlling the playhead on the timeline using labels on frames. Mm -hmm. With the labels in ActionScript we can jump back and forth between different points in the animation. In this basic animation what I have on the stage is a movie clip that has a series of four different colors and some dots that bounce around just to show that the animation is carrying forward. So there we go cycles through these four colors. There's a dot that appears and disappears and moves around a little bit just so you can see that the animation is continuing. And there are four buttons, each with rollover states. The buttons I took from one of the common external libraries. It's inside classic buttons, circle buttons. It's the play button. I took four copies of that. If you look in the library here, I duplicated it three times. So I've got four different ones, each with its own name. That way I could change the labels. If I'd only taken one and dragged it out four times, they're just going to be four copies of the same button symbol. So we had to duplicate it and put four different buttons out there. Uh, change the text inside each one so that we know which point in the animation we're going to be jumping to. These are just labels. Now each one of them, if we look at the properties panel, has their own name. Green button, yellow button, blue, purple button, and blue button. The movie clip itself has an instance name, Box MC. Now, what we want to do in the action script is stop the animation from running. So the timeline inside of Box MC is what we want to stop. And then we're going to use these buttons to jump back and forth between the different ones. One graphic thing I want to show you here, the buttons, I just randomly drag them onto the stage. But what I can do, if I select all of them, with this align tool right here, the align panel, I can say line them all up to the one that's furthest left. If I click on that button, there we go. They're all nicely aligned. Now I want to distribute them. I want to space them equally. Same sort of thing. I select them all and in the distribute section, distribute vertical center. Click. There we go. Now they're all evenly spaced out and they're all lined up along the same edge. So that's just a simple graphic thing that we can do. In the document class, I've got event and mouse event. I'm going to be clicking on the buttons and using the event class to control the movement from one frame to the next. We're going to use the enter frame event to listen for that timing. We're at 30 frames per second, or rather 24 frames per second, so that we're going to get 24 points where we can do something every second. For my variables, I created four different constants, four different, well, I declared them as variables, but gave them the names in capitals so they look like constants. I can change the word here from var to const, and then they will actually be constants. So let's do that very quickly. There we go. I've got two variables, one with the number one. This is my frame count. What I'm going to do is, I'm, as I step through the frames inside the box movie clip, I'm going to increment this number. When I get up to number 9, which is the number of frames per movie clip, I'm going to jump back to the start of that movie clip. And blue is going to be my starting animation point. Uh, so here we are back in the FLA. There's my movie clip. I'll double click to go inside of it. You can see down here that the graphical part of it, if I had the other thing, nothing changes on the stage. The graphical part of it has all those keyframes with the animation, the little black dot moving around, the background color changing. On the layer above it, you can see these words, blue, purple, yellow, green, with a little red flag. Those are labels. They're just names that we've given to the frame itself. If I click on that keyframe, See, it's an, they're all empty circles, meaning there's nothing on the stage. But here, label, name, green. If I jump to this one, it's called yellow. This one's purple. This one's blue. If I jump somewhere in between, it's all part of this. This section is called blue. This section is called purple, and so on. So we're going to be jumping between these different points in the timeline green, blue, yellow, purple. There's the names. I just saved them as constants to make it easier for me to type. I don't have to put the quotation marks in. 
saves me a little bit of typing. If I ever change them, I come in here, I change this label, and I don't have to do anything else in my code. All right, so I'll collapse this so we can see a little bit more of the code. I add the click listeners to the four buttons. I use the same function for all of them. And what I want to do is I want to get the name of the button that was clicked. These buttons are called blue underscore BTN, yellow underscore BTN, green underscore BTN, purple underscore BTN. So I'm going to get the name of the one that was clicked and trace out that message. So if I run this, save it, run it. If I click on this one, it tells me over here, purple button was clicked, blue, yellow, green. So we're going to take this label right here, and we're going to say, so, okay, if this is the one that was clicked, I want to jump to the frame with the label green. If this one's clicked, I want to jump to the frame with the label yellow, and so on. So we're going to take this variable btn, which will be the name, and I'm going to build a switch case statement. So I actually got this code written here. I'm just going to copy it, paste it in, save a little bit of time. Here we are. Looking at the name, if it's blue, green, purple, or yellow, I'm going to jump ahead to the blue frame, the green frame, the purple frame, or the yellow frame, and set my variable pointing to that one. This I will use inside of my enter frame event. So this will jump ahead. Now I have a line of code here up in my constructor function that tells the timeline inside the box not to run. So if I run this now, this does not advance. The box stays on its very first frame. But my enter frame event that we've added right here, this is still going to run. So 24 times a second, this function is being called, just right now it doesn't do anything. What we want to do inside of here is we want to actually increment which frame we're looking at. So we're going to count our frames and we'll write out this current box frame. That was our number one up here. If I run this now, you can see that the number one gets written again and again and again. If I were to increment that variable, that acts like a counter. You can see the number goes up and up and up and up and up and here it gets higher and higher. Right. I don't want to just increment this. I'm going to increment it and tell my animation to jump ahead one frame at a time. I'll put this inside here. So, right here, this function, next frame, that's built into every movie clip. Every movie clip has a method called next frame, a method called prev frame, and it'll either move ahead one or back one frame. There's properties for current frame, there's properties for total frames, so you find out if you're at the end of an animation, the beginning of an animation, partway through of an, an, partway through an animation. What I'm doing is I want to break this up inside my movie clip here, you can see my keyframes, the labels on frame 1, and I'm going to go up to frame 9, and then 10 plus 9, 20 plus 9, 30 plus 9. They're in little segments of 9 frames. This could be any length at all that I want. I just arbitrarily chose to put my new keyframes at 10, 20, and 30. But I want to loop inside this small section of my timeline. So right here, my current box frame, if that number is 9, jump back to number 1, and I'm going to say go to and stop that frame number. If it's not 9, I'm going to add 1 to it, so from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and jump to that particular frame. So this will continue me looping inside of one of the sections. My initial target was blue, so I'm jumping to the blue frame. When I click on the green, I'm setting my target as the green frame. 
So when this runs, I'm looping frames 1 through 9 in the blue section. If I click on purple, I will jump to the purple section and then loop inside those nine frames. Yellow, green, and so on. And we can jump between any one of these at any point. Every time we click on one, it will set our current target to that color. And inside here, we're always incrementing but checking to see if we've reached the end with number nine. If we have, jump back to number one. And that's it. That's how you control animation through timeline or through a section of the timeline.